was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. Came to Denver in 1977. Uh, only one year graduated from Gateway High School. Became a police officer in 1981. Originally with um, small agencies and joined the Denver Police Department in 1987. I um, play baseball, golf. I like to get out and um, enjoy myself. Family, married, have children. They've all graduated proudly from college and going on with their lives. I'm excited about this new piece of chapter in my career where I, I was appointed to Commander of District 5, which is the Northeast Quadrant of Denver. Interesting, growing up in Brooklyn in the projects, um, we would have neighborhood police officers walk through, the, walk through the projects. As a young boy, I would um, always laugh and joke with the police officer, Officer Winston, can never forget the guy. And we created a relationship where we would talk and laugh and joke, and I always seen him as a friend. As I thought that was a really good relationship. When I got old, I learned what a police officer was and what the responsibilities of an officer, and I said, I want to do that. Um, the day I turned 21 was the day I started my law enforcement career. Um, 32 years later, here I am. Well, I moved to, moved to Colorado in 19, well, 1977. And um, families, my mother says, you know, um, New York is getting a little too rough for a boy, so we all came out here where my uncle lived and Colorado was a nicer community to live in. Um, when I uh, became a police officer, originally it was in a small city, Denver offered a lot more of a challenge and offers a lot more diversity in assignment and diversity in, in people and diversity of, of cultures. So I thought that was an opportune time or opportunity for me to explore the things I like to do the best, and that's hang with people. Policing has many challenges, but one of the challenges I take internally is how to restore public trust. I think it's so easy to, it's so fragile, and it's so easy to diminishing public trust. We get paid to do things right, but we also get paid to do them the right way. I think it's one thing to want to do the right thing, but you got to do it the right way. That's, that's where the challenge comes in when you talk about split-second decisions, you talk about remembering laws, remembering policy, and you're talking about um, what you do not only affects you and others, but it has long-term effects on the image of the organization. The challenge is to maintain that image to be a positive image, have people trust us externally and internal trust within the organization. I think that's where leadership comes in. I think that's where putting people in, or leaders in key positions in the organization will help build those public trusts. And that's a challenge that Chief White is out to, um, to demonstrate and, and same with the leadership team he's put together. First is, yeah, I got to back up. I, um, I worked District 5 maybe 20 years ago and it's interesting, the streets are the same but now there's a lot of stuff on those streets. My first challenge in District 5 is starting is to re-meet the community, reconnect with the different communities, the, the growing community. Um, I'm talking about people with legitimate power and people with grassroots power, people who make things happen. At the same time, to connect with the Peoria Corridor, the Tower Road Corridor, the business districts, that's, that's a huge challenge. I think that's, the, and that's how you continue to build public trust, but you also, you have to bring your ears to those challenges. You have to listen to what's being said. I'm excited about that challenge in regards to my, to how we affect the community. I surrounded myself with a good leadership team of lieutenants and, and sergeants, and I rely on those, those officers to help me lead the organization, help me listen to what our communities are saying, help me um, provide the tools and the resources for my officers to provide the service that we, um, that we say we will do. I also want the feedback from both sides, from my organization, from my leadership team, from um, uh, my communities, of what are we doing, is it being effective. Um, I'm excited about those challenges because this is a job that comes with no instructions. This is a job that you have proven through the years of, of, of experience, the years of of learning new processes, understanding how to manage, understanding how to lead, and now you have to put those theories in effect and, and make them work. What you'll find, I'm very flexible, very fair. I love people, I love to get out, and um, I spend most of my time walking through the community whether I'm just walking through the store. I really enjoy those real human contacts with folks because that's the time to create those bonds, those trusts, that's the time to develop Oh, who, what's the Denver Police Officer made of? What are they really like? Is it like we see on TV? Or is it like the image I learned as a child? Who is Les Perry and who does he represent? So I, um, I want people to know that I'm, I'm, I'm here, I'm always available. 
I, you can contact me any time of the day, and I will listen. To, and then at the same time, I'll offer some advice, some opinions, or resources, whatever the challenge may be. My name is... Can somebody turn on the lights, please? Come on. Turn on the lights so I can tell my story. Please, a little bit of light. Wow! Not that much light. Turn the lights down a little bit. A little bit. Ah, that's much, much better. Alright. My name is Commodore Matthew C. Perry. I am a naval officer in the United States Navy. But let's on to my story. In 1853, wow, I can tell the story without any help, please. Thank you. Back to our story. In 1853, I get a call from the president, President Millard Fillmore. He said he wanted me to go to Japan and establish trade. See, since the 17th century, Japan did not want to trade with anybody except maybe China. So I gathered up my troops and we got on board our ships and set sail to Japan. We were a very disciplined crew. I would not tolerate any goofing around or horseplay. We had serious business to get to Japan. Now I know what you're all wondering. How come I'm the only one with a face and they just have round heads. That's because I'm the only one that's important in this story. Don't pay attention to them. Anyway, back to Japan. So after many days of sailing, we finally reach Japan. I go on land and talk to the people and tell them, I am Matthew C. Perry and I've got a message from my president and we want to open trade. And you know what they told me? They told me no. I'm Matthew C. Perry. And they told me no. They didn't want to trade with us. So I asked them all and they did not want to trade with us. So I did what you had to do. We turned around and went back to the good old U.S. of A. Now when I got back to America, the president was not too happy. He wanted me to try again, so I did, but this time I took our new steam-powered battleships, much bigger, and they didn't have to rely just on sails. It was steam power. They were way more powerful, and they packed way more cannons. So this time I was going to negotiate a little differently. In February of 1854, we return to Japan. We go back with seven ships this time. Four sailing ships and three steamers. We had 1,600 men. Now the people of Japan, when they saw those steamships out in the harbor with the black smoke and the cannons, they thought they looked like dragons. Yeah, I think they were a little afraid. They wanted me to go, but I said no. Not until we sign our treaty. So there was a little bit of a standoff. But finally, in March 31st, 1854, we sign our treaty. And it established permanent friendship and trade between our two countries. I returned back to America a hero. And from what I hear, the people still celebrate me coming to Japan with those steamships because it was a waking call for them. They got to see our ships that looked like dragons. Well, that's my story. Bye-bye.